Well, welcome to New Life Church Rugby. Uh, my name is Andrew Scotland, I'm the pastor here at New Life Church Rugby. And I want to encourage you through the word of God this morning to uh, continue to strive to do his work in these days and in these times. I've been really touched by sometimes the words of the Apostle Paul, but in particular his farewell at Ephesus. And you can find this in Acts chapter 20, verse 29. And Paul is talking to the leaders of the church and he doesn't know or he knows that he will never see them again. Now this is a church that he has worked extensively into and this is a real heartfelt uh, farewell. And sometimes we have to feel the emotion that's cum communicated through the words because we can sometimes detach ourselves from the situation and not realize what's going on. But here is a heartfelt farewell. I know that after I leave, savage wolves will come in among you and will not spare the flock. Now here is a, a kicker, so to speak. Paul is reluctant to leave them, and the reason why he's reluctant to leave them is he knows that as soon as the shepherd leaves, or the one who takes responsibility for the well-being of the church, walks out the door, that the enemy seeks to get a foothold in. And this way he talks of the church as being a flock, and then he mentions about the wolves. Now, we know the wolves are a symbol of Rome. And as being a symbol of Rome, what he is basically saying is that there are worldly spiritual influences that are going to try and come into the church and attack the church because I am vacating my position and I am going to be judged in Rome and in Jerusalem. Even from your own number of men will arise and distort the truth in order to draw away disciples after them. So even in the leadership of the church, and those who are in the church, there will be people who will rise up amongst them for selfish ambition, seeking for people to not worship God, but to worship them. So be on your guard. Remember that for three years I never stopped warning each of you night and day with tears. Now I commit you to God and to the word of his grace, which can build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Paul is saying in this environment where changes and transformations are happening at such a rapid basis, you must not neglect the word of grace that God has given to you because the word of grace has the power to sanctify you and bring you through these trials and tribulations. I have not coveted anyone's silver or gold or clothing. What is Paul saying here? He's saying, if you are going to look to those who will lead you, make sure that they act in the way that I act. I don't covet silver. I don't covet gold. I don't have any desire for earthly possessions. I seek to covet the Word of God and to empower the people of God to do His will and His will alone. You yourselves know that these hands of mine have supplied my own needs and the needs of my companions. In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words the Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. So he's encouraging them to remember to help those who are vulnerable, those who are weak, those who are needy, to prioritize others rather than self. And this is where leadership really needs to kick in. It needs to focus on bringing the selfless nature out of people and not the selfish nature out of people. I don't know about you in this environment of what's going on with the coronavirus and all the different things that you're seeing. You see both. You see the selfish nature of people in the stockpiling of resources and not thinking about anybody else other than themselves and their own family. And then you see those who are going out the way saying, if there's anybody that needs help with food or getting resources, I will help you, just contact me. God wants us to be a people who are selfless rather than selfish. It is more blessed to give than to receive. When Paul had finished speaking, he knelt down with all of them and prayed. They all wept as they embraced him and kissed him. What grieved them most was his statement that they would never see his face again. Then they accompanied him to the ship. We need to act with people why we have them. 
because people are precious. They're the greatest gift that God has given us. We do not take for granted the people that God has given us in leadership because one day we might not have them. Celebrate people while you have them and not when you don't have them. This is the greatest sadness that we always find that at funerals and at places where we mark the death of somebody who we celebrate, we go out all out to say how much we love them. And then sometimes when they're just living and living with us at this moment in time, we neglect to say thank you for all the things that they've done and the encouragement that they've been. So I want you to remember at this time to be thankful for the people that God has put on your path and to encourage them to follow after God and do the things that God would have of you. Until the next time, be blessed.